Uh, Senator, we have not gotten a chance to talk to you about what you think uh, of these most recent plans we've heard um, coming out of uh, not only Elizabeth Warren, but also Bernie Sanders. Well, good morning, Becky. Uh, and I have to uh, start by noting that uh, Allentown and Bethlehem, featured in the uh, the bumper music uh, coming into this segment, are actually doing quite well. The Lehigh yeah, I, Valley I, I noticed that, too, where it's like where they're closing it's, all the factories down. Forgot about that line coming into it. Yeah, but there's been a tremendous recovery that's been uh, in the works for many years. Um, but, uh, you know, one good way to do a lot of economic damage, uh, these incredible tax proposals, um, really, really far left ideas that we haven't entertained in America in, gosh, I don't think in my lifetime, the idea that we'll confiscate people's assets, these, you know, huge tax increases uh, on, on business, on capital, on income. And, you know, if, God forbid, our Democratic friends take complete control of the elected government, they will do these things. There's, there's little doubt in my mind. So um, it's, it's, it's really important that we push back. With um, all the talk of inequality and concerns and, and what you've seen kind of play out in the electorate, it's probably no surprise that you're seeing kind of this battle take place at this point. What, what do you think? Well, I, think I look at it differently. Come down. Okay. Uh, so I look at it differently. I, I think it's uh, amazing to me that at this moment, when we have record low unemployment, all-time record low unemployment for, for groups that have historically had traditionally higher unemployment, we have wage growth accelerating. It's accelerating the most at the lowest end of the income spectrum. So in this economy, we're narrowing the income gap. This is the moment when the U.S. is outperforming the entire world, when asset prices have been very strong, and this is the moment when socialism is on the rise, mm -hmm. and our Democratic colleagues are deciding, you know, never mind all this. Let's 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 move in the direction of Venezuela. It's Senator, incredible to me, Senator. I, I don't know if the if the Democrats' approach is, is the right one or not, uh, but I'll tell you what I find amazing. What I find amazing is that we have uh, remarkable inequality in this economy that you talk about being as good as it is. You have deficits which are rising at record rates. I mean, that's what's, that's what's amazing. And so my question to you is, okay, if you don't like the Democrats' plan, which, which I completely accept on its face, what, what is the Republican plan to deal with these issues, both the inequality issue and separately the deficit issue? Well, so, so two things. First of all, what we're, de what we're witnessing right now, as you know, is accelerating wage growth, right? And accelerating wage growth most pronounced at the low end of the income spectrum. So strong growth is proving to be diminishing the gap in, in income and the, the inequality gap. Um, as far as deficits go, look, I, I've said uh, for decades now, we've got to restructure the big entitlement programs. They are not sustainable. They are all designed to grow faster than GDP, and no government program can grow faster than GDP indefinitely. And these giant plans, Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, are doing exactly that. They need to be restructured. But, Senator, and even, of course, even if you cut you know, out 10 per, even if we all decide that there's, there, there's fraud and waste and all sorts of other things, and you can cut it down by, let's say, 10 percent, which would be a, a minor miracle in this environment right now, the question is, ultimately, do you need to raise more revenue? And how do you do that? So I don't think that's the best way to do this. And, and in fact, raising more revenue doesn't solve the problem of big programs growing faster than the economy, right? The revenue won't grow faster than the economy. And the, so, so they're unsustainable. The good news is we don't have to make any draconian cuts. We don't have to throw people off programs. What we need to do is pick a date in the reasonably near future and begin to did his modify answer for, for wage the, the growth program. Satisfy you, or did his answer for the inequality thing? You, you didn't acknowledge whether he answered your your question about how are they doing anything about income inequality? If wages are growing faster than they have in years at the low end, right. is that a positive for you? Did that so answer it's actually, your? It's it. I mean, if you're if you're asking me the question, I'm just. I'm but no, the, I am. I'm, I'm, just, guest, I'm just. No, I'm just wondering Senator. whether. I'm just wondering I whether. Senator, but did that speak to you? It speaks to me. Okay. But I think All right. The other side. I thought he answered that question. So the great you. news is you're right. On okay, the, but on then the but bottom you end, focus on the deficit. Well, no, no. But then there's also the top end. And by the way, you want to bring that down. Well, I'm just not that I want to bring it down. It's that that it, that it, the the benefits are have been remarkably uneven. Okay. Insofar as even as we've gotten the bottom Toomey, end. Senator we're going to lose him in just a minute. Uh, Senator Toomey, let's get back to the economy that you were talking about. That's why we see the concerns right. that we've seen in the markets over the last couple of days. Do you have concerns uh, based on what's coming out there? Do you think the market is right to be sniffing out some of these issues that are out there? We're watching every economic number very closely right now. 
Yeah, so so my my view is that the the combination of adverse trade developments and uncertainty about where we're going on trade has had a chilling effect on corporate investment. That seems to be the the area that's been leading the deceleration. Fortunately, really really strong on the service side and on the consumer side. And so I don't think that we're heading to a recession anytime soon. Mm -hmm. But uh, we don't need a new trade war. We don't need a new front on the existing trade wars. We ought to be working hard to get those resolved. I commend the administration for making progress with Japan on expanding trade. Uh, we should really try to avoid a big trade war with uh, the European Union so you're uh, against because the that will put further breaks. You're against uh, well, look, the WTO you know, action and then what, the tariff that we're looking so the WTO, uh, you know, announced what we've known all along. The Europeans have subsidized Airbus. And despite that, of course, we know that Boeing outperforms Airbus. Boeing has had record sales. The only American competitor has done great in the face of those ongoing subsidies. What I hope the administration does is use this as the moment to negotiate a settlement here. Let's get an agreement that we're not going to have subsidies for these, um, for these giant companies. Um, I think the Europeans are probably in a place where they might be willing to do this, <laughs> and, and I think that's, uh, that's how this ought to end. What do you think about the trade war with China? I know you've given the administration kudos uh, for going after intellectual property theft, but you don't like the tariffs. Where do you think this winds up? Uh, so, you know, at this point, clearly that's the tool the president has used to pressure China to change their ways. Uh, I do put China in a different category than, you know, our allies. Um, but uh, I hope we don't have a, uh, you know, a, a continued acceleration in this. Um, I think there's a reason both sides ought to want an agreement by early, mid next year, and I hope we can get there.